of Jersey. I'm 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 probably an hour away from Larry, so I'm like the the southernmost tip of New Jersey right now. Oh, okay, man, you know it's it's, it's good to have y'all all connected, so that way, no matter how far you're at, you know, ain't nobody call. You know, we're yeah, man, it's it's cool, cool, man. And we get together pretty often these days, so you know, if we got to drive an hour and a half or two to to see each other, it's not a big deal for us, man. Yeah. Now, growing up, what was life like, you know, uh, as a kid for you guys, you know, growing up in the 80s, you know, you had New Edition, you had, uh, you know, like what else, uh, Bobby Brown and uh, Ready for the World, you know, so like what the music, so like, so like, so like what the music was like for you guys growing up. You you hitting us over the head right now, man, because you, you, you're bringing back memories, man. <laughs> yeah. no, but, but, but truthfully speaking, I mean, Bob and I grew up in the Bronx in New York City. Uh, you know, oh, so, so so we're New Yorkers, and we were growing up in the 70s, you know, the early 80s and that era. That was like our time. We were in our adolescence and we actually grew up when hip hop, when, when the rap form, you know, that whole deal was being, you know, at its conception. Right. You know, a lot of people don't know this about us, but we were in the streets in the Bronx watching, you know, DJ Scott LaRock and KRS-One perform live in street jams. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? And so, you know, that was the first inspiration for us. So we started out rapping. Roberto and I started out rapping, you know? And so okay. we had a couple of rap groups back in the day, and that elevated into, you know, the singing thing. You know, if you remember the Force M M MDs, they used yeah, to be the Force MCs. Yeah. We used to watch them live too on the street, you know, and uh, and and so we kind of got some inspiration from them, and we started singing and harmonizing. And that grew into songwriting, and and that's that's kind of how we got into the whole deal, man. Right, true. true. Yeah, man, because you know what, people don't realize, you know, when you know, like in a black and brown community, man, especially in New York and different parts of you know of America, man, you know, everybody was doing like freestyle dancing beatboxing and stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, we dominate you, that, you, you know. You're, look, you're looking at two break dancers right here. I'm all messed up right now. I can imagine, man, like the competition, man, like you fellas, man, went up against in those days, going to the different clubs or yeah, man, certain no, neighborhoods. Man. Like, come on, like, yo, what's up, man? <laughs> you know? man it's, it's, a story, oh. it's, it's, it's all real, yeah. We actually used to go... Um, to all the block parties back then when we were growing up in, in, in the Bronx, every schoolyard would have block parties. Oh, That's when the DJs wow. would come over with two, two turntables, eight crates of records, and 40 speakers. Right. You know what I mean? And it we used to crazy. walk around, we used to go from, from block party to block party with our microphones in our hands and ask the <laughs> DJ, can we get on the mic? You know, so that was that was open mic night for us. And we used to go and, you know, test out crimes. We used to actually battle other groups. Yeah, you know, and, and the unique thing about right. us was that not only were we rapping, we we started implementing the singing and the harmonies. So we we did pretty well for ourselves back in the days. We we out battled, you know, a good handful of, of, of people back in the Bronx. And I wasn't in the group at the time. I was just right. hanging out with them. I right. was just, you know, I'm from a county, and I'm like, yo. He started, he started off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry, we hooked up, uh, like, in the late, very, I would say, early 80s, as, as right. far as the friendship was concerned. Right. So our friendship goes back 40-plus yeah. years. Right. Okay. Right. We were teenagers. Oh, we were right. in high school. We, we were breakdancing. And then, you know, but Bobby and I brought, you know, we went from, from New York to Maryland, which is where we met Larry. We brought that whole... Stilo from the Bronx down, you know, we brought the break dancing, the rap, the whole nine yards, and we started dancing together. And right around 91 is when Larry joined us and Marty, who's who's one of the original members of 4 p.m., who's not with us today. But, you know, I mean, he's he's still living. <laughs> OK, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me get this thing. Our boy yeah, is still living. You know how that living. goes, man. <laughs> yeah, he's out in L.A. living a beautiful life. I mean, we invited him to be a part of this. He, You know, God had other plans for him, so he's doing his thing. But, uh. But, you know, to go, to, to go back to what we were saying, man, we started singing, and before you know it, man, 4 p.m. was, was formed, man. And, and, and it started out as for real. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say, too, man. Uh, like, uh, when it comes to, you know, putting a group together, you usually you, you got to think to yourself, like, okay, like, how are we going to approach, you know, introduce ourselves to the world, what type of style are we going to bring and, and have a message? You know, using some groups, you know, you might see the average. So what was your ideas of incorporating, you know, this four-man group and, and what type of music you want to represent? 
I, I think that it came very organically, man. Like, you know, we have a lot of different influences, right? So when we grew up, dad had a record collection that included the early Motown stuff, like, you know, the Smokey Robinsons, the Stylistics, and all those older sort of Motown groups. And then as we were coming up, the Jackson 5 hit the scene, you know what I mean? The Bee Gees yeah. hit the scene, you know, uh, you know, Cool in the Gang hit the scene, Earth, Wind, the Fire hit the scene, yeah. and we were into all of that stuff. So when we started writing, it's not like we had any particular group in mind, but we started writing. We started thinking of melodies and writing lyrics and all. And so what you heard from us was just, I think, a combination of all those all different those styles different and all those different influences kind of combined into one, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and eventually, because we have a very distinct harmony, the, you know, the, the three of us, I think that, that that became the 4 p.m. style, that blend that we have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, cause, yeah. You know, that's crazy because at that time, man, it was so many groups, man, coming back to back. Back in those days, we we know who is who. These days, man, with the internet, man, people ask me, man, like, you heard this artist? Look, man, there's too many of them, man. It's hard it's to keep up with. <laughs> back then, like you said, you can name, you can name the Ace Towns and the Silks and the 112s and the So For Reals, and there were so many of them, you know, but we knew them, you know what I'm saying? Right. You right. know, Boys mm -hmm. to Man, All For One, you know, the, the you know, eventually it was the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, they they kind of came into the, to the picture, but but people were familiar. Nowadays, you're right. I mean, the industry is very much saturated, I think, yeah. with with groups and all that this and that and the other but you know i mean like i said you know everybody we're giving everybody love out there man you know you know giving props to anybody that's trying to make it out there we give a props absolutely now correct me on this did you guys already had demos to shop around for like labels or was like soft was present to you guys when you was getting ready to be signed on we we had a different approach, man. Yeah, yeah. We had a different approach, man, because we we didn't have the facilities to record when we were coming up. So, right. you know, we we actually when we were writing our music, the only way that we could put the song together was a cappella. Oh, so, we, you know, right. because we we're not instrumentalists either. So it was like, all right, Bob, here's the low part. Larry, here's the the high oh, part. Marty, here's the middle section. <laughs> you know, this is what we're gonna do in the background. I'm gonna get ahead of the lead, and so we arranged the song with the instrumentation in our voices in the background. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and we got so good at that that we had a slew of songs that we could sing at the at the drop of a hat without any instrumentation. You know what I'm saying? So we right. ended up started doing shows everywhere man we were singing the in the in the subways back in the day Ancestral station we'd be right you in know there. we we uh in, <laughs> okay in baltimore they had the inner harbor they had a little amphitheater we'd go sing there drop a hat down you know try to collect some they change because we didn't have a permit but it was all right we right. didn't care right right <laughs> so that's how we did it man and so eventually people would see us make a phone call hey there's these guys singing at the inner harbor you got to hear them we got invited to do a show up in new jersey and and perform there and then we met our, our our first producers there they introduced us to the guy who who ended up becoming our manager yeah, yeah, yeah. that manager then introduced us to the guy who owned the label that we ended up signing to so yeah. it was just a snowball effect so there was no demos <laughs> <laughs> yeah see people don't realize man like you know ours like our sales back then back then you know like y'all was built different because rd days man they get lazy or they'll try to Find the type of way. Well, I don't want to do this. I don't want. Hey, man, you got to put that work in, man. I mean, yeah. it's easy to do something now and throw something out there, but yeah. when you front of the, the music executive, the whole team, you got to perform right in front of them. Either oh, it's acapella yeah. or whatever. <laughs> it's exactly. on the spot. Exactly. Back then, the internet didn't exist, man. So we actually had to go. We had to go to radio stations. We had to record drops for radio. Yeah, we, we had to go. Drop. It, you know, once the record re released, we had the, our promos were going into record stores when record stores existed and do a performance. People would come in and buy the cassettes. We were on cassettes back then. Right. We'd, we'd sign cassettes. Th those were the autographs. I mean, we had to do everything live in in front of us. We didn't, yeah. we didn't have, we didn't oh, have Instagram. We didn't have, have, we didn't have nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> Now, well, now, uh, you know, I just realized something, man. You guys were signed to the label, man, that used to be real popular at one point because, like, y'all was all there with Kid and Play, Salt and Pepper, uh, yeah. a bunch of different artists, man. That was a, 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 a popular label at once, man. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, like, what the hell went wrong again? Yeah, but we'll get to that yeah. label folded. Uh, now, yeah. all, all y'all debut album, uh, who came with the title for uh, now, uh, uh, Now's the Time? 
It's a good question, man. It's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think that was a, a joint a joint uh decision to call it now's the time because everybody used to take the 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 name 4 p.m. is an acronym for four positive music. But we always used to say, you know, we're 4 p.m. What time is it 4 p.m.? So we kind of put a play on words. Now's the time for positive music. So that ended up being the 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 name of the of the first album. Right. The moment the time we came up with it, I can't remember. Yeah, no, no. I don't remember what I did last week. <laughs> <laughs> and see, back in those days, man, you know, artists, you know, they had like a, a, a cool names, but they had a backstory behind it. No, it yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because like before you guys, 4 p.m., you had After 7, you had All for One, yeah, you know, Boys to Bed, like 80 backstory, man, was something. Go ahead. Absolutely, man. man. Absolutely, man. 100% correct. Yeah, man, but it it, it was uh, it was interesting, man, because we ended up getting the idea for Sukiyaki from the, the the record label executive. Okay, you know, we were already in the studio, already recording, but he said, "You guys need you need a song, you need, you need a song that's gonna take you, get you there." You know what I mean? And we said, "Well, what do you have in mind?" And he got with us about a week after that conversation. And said, "There's a song called Sukiyaki. It was a big hit back in '63 when it came out originally, and then in '81, a group called The Taste of Honey brought it up to the top of the charts again." And it's been about 10 or so years, a little more than 10 years, and that's going to be the one. So we went in the studio, we recorded it, took us about a, a couple of weeks seven to do takes. it. We, did seven we seven. send it back to him. He was like, no, it's not ready. There's too much music in the beginning. Strip the music in the beginning. Let that come in a cappella, and halfway through, let the instrumentation kind of build in. So he kind of helped kind of direct and guide that process. And, and once we sent it the way he wanted it, he was like, that's it, fellas, that's the one. You know what I'm saying? So he put it out and it started climbing the charts. As soon as it got into the top 10, it was like, we need an album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, we <laughs> so, you know, we weren't ready to do it, but it was like, we did an album. So it, in, in 21 days, we, we completed 13 songs and we put that Now's the Time album. Out. Man, yes. it, what you call work ethic, man. You, man, could, you could have some of these independent artists try to do that, man. If they try to be like, oh, man, it's too much, man. Hard work. Little man, come on, man. Nah, you, you got to grow. You got to get that hustle in, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, how did it feel to have your first, you know, top 10 Hot 100 hit, man? And then, like, along wow. with other names on there. I mean, like, I know that felt good and stuff for you. Oh, man. man, I was on a high, man, because I, I would go down the road and hear the, the song on the radio. I was like, my song was on the radio. You know? <laughs> I would call my, my you know, girl, yeah, was, can you believe that? And she was like, what? Yeah, it's on the radio. They would go real quick, turn the TV on, MTV, there it is. Oh, right. what? It's on MTV. It's it was a little bit You have the picture, man. Yeah, it was crazy, man. It was, it was, it was just crazy. Yeah, you know, man. It was, it was, it was, real, it was definitely a surreal moment, yeah. without, without a doubt, man. You know, to be able to, you know, as a matter of fact, when I song topped the chart, we were out in Asia promoting the record out in Asia. Yeah. Wow. We were doing an Asian tour. In fact, we, we spent the whole time out there while our song was on the top 10. And we spent about 22 weeks in the top 10. And we didn't even get back to American soil until after it she dropped off. Back down. You know what, I'm saying? Like, what are we doing out there? So, you know, it, it was, it was not yeah. the best decision for our record label to have us out there while our record was popping off here. I mean, we should have been here doing, you know, Good Morning America and, and Oprah Winfrey and right. all the good shows that were popping off back in the day. But that goes to show you, man, so, you know, when 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 your your career is in the hands of others, right. sometimes it doesn't always pan out the way you want it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You know, and that's it, not to take anything away from what they did do for us because they actually did a lot of great things for us. And and had it not been for them, we wouldn't we we never would have had to sit that that top ten single. So you right. know, you got to take the credit where you can take it and and count your losses where you where you where you count them. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah, cause it's all since this success was like with gold in Japan, platinum Australia, and I think gold and somewhere else was in Canada or something Canada, like that. Right, right, right. It went gold in the U.S. It went platinum in Canada, platinum in Australia, and gold in Japan. Yeah. Now, yeah. like with some of the shows, if I'm correct, you guys did top of the pops at that time. Yes, oh, yeah. we did. Yes, oh, we yeah. did. Yes, we yeah. did. That was a nice show, man. We did a couple of big shows. We did Friday Night Videos. I don't know if you remember that yeah, show. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> right? We, we actually performed uh, on the same night as Boys to Men, so we, we both sang Christmas songs on that show. Yeah, it was pretty right cool. Right around Christmas yeah. season on Friday Night Videos. So that was pretty cool. And Jay yeah, Leno's uh, studio, Jay Leno's studio was right next door, so I think we, we got a chance to go and kind of peep his studio out and everything. So, you know, we had a lot of a lot of real cool moments back then. Yeah, it did. We Absolutely. did. 
Yeah, man, I mean, like, what it feel like just to be on TV, man? You know, that's one thing. Have your video is out in the world and stuff, but especially as a kid, you look, you think to yourself, like, man, I love to be on it, but then think that it was actually going to happen. So, like, how did it feel? You know, just to, just to see that y'all family call you and say, "Hey, I saw you on TV," and oh, it was crazy. Stuff. I mean, I like, yeah, it's it's a crazy experience, man. I mean, I, I tell you one one particular moment. We were on a morning show in New York City. We actually had to split promotions. So me and Ray did one show. Larry and Marty went to do another, another show. show. It was right. crazy. While we were being interviewed live on national TV, one of my homeboy's moms called the TV station and asked to talk to, <laughs> to speak to one of her boys. And you know, they said, Well, we got a phone call for you. And I'm like, What? Who? And she's like, Oh, we just saw you on TV. Like, Wow, this is like really surreal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, it, and it took really everybody by surprise because we were we were so much into the ground. Everybody saw us running from Maryland to New Jersey to record. You know, that was a weekly that routine was a for us. Affairs, you know, we'd yeah. work on demos, we'd come we come home, we'd be anxious to get back to Jersey. We were in the city, you know shopping for wardrobes and getting ready for photo shoots Shoot. and video shoots and this yeah, and that. Crazy. As yeah. soon as the record blew up, it just took everybody by surprise, yeah, yeah. even us. Yeah. Right. You know, people were calling me, did we? Did I just see you and Ray on, on TV on a video? I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And that's crazy, yeah. man. That song, man, it's like the most played ever, the most sampled song ever. And when you guys was coming out, it's like groups had to, you know, do an acapella version. It's like you had to stay ready. You know, if you ask artists yeah. of today, they'd be like, oh, yeah. give me a minute. Back then, it's like groups, and even solo artists, they was ready, man. No matter where they was at on TV, yeah. in person, yeah. whatever, just just a single verse and stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you had Snoop Dogg, I think, featured it on the song. Mary J. Blige featured, featured you know, a verse or so on the song. Slick Rick did it. I mean, the song, the history of the song goes way far, way back further than us than we do. You know what I'm saying? So the song is, is you know, it's been in our music history right. since 63. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know, so I mean, it was originally done by a Japanese artist, and it was a, it was one of the one of the few, I think, one of three foreign songs to go number one here in the U.S. back in those days. So, that, you know, that just doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And so right, it man. became such a popular tune that a Taste of Honey said, you know what? We're going to write an English version, use the same melody. We write an English version, and that's how the, the original version of Sukiyaki came to be. Yeah, you know, with Taste of Honey. Yeah. And so our version is is a play on theirs because we're using the same lyrics. The only thing we added different was Bob's talking, talking part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the only different lyric that you hear on our version. But then our version became sort of the popular version, man. Like you said, man, we we watched videos the other day of young cats from all over the world singing singing that version, our version of the song. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of cool to see people, yeah. you know, appreciating your art and your craft and, 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 and you know, emulating you in that way. So it's, it's pretty good yeah. to see that. You know, you know, like after the song has success, you know, people always be like, well, can they do it again? You know, can you, can you guys break it? And, you know, and, so, and one thing about these people to realize, you know, it's always a hit and miss. When it yes, comes to yes, you know yes. trying to reclaim that again, uh, did it kind of bother you from there at that point? Be like you know, like let's just keep going. So hopefully you know, like something good might happen. I, I think that we all we all felt kind of felt a certain way about it not going exactly the way that we anticipated it to go back in those days. A lot of it again had to do with decisions that were being made outside of our control, right? right? right. You know, yeah. so. You know, it, it, the the relationship got to the point where ultimately, you know, we it was severed, right? We got out of our record contracts, we got out of our management deals, and we ended up not having any deals at all, right? And so it's not like we we didn't want to continue because over the years, the guys could tell you we would regroup every couple of years, write a bunch of songs, try to find the right production connection, try to do it again, but it never kind of panned out. You know, so we, we ended up and we still do have about 60 songs in the archives that we wrote over the past, what, 30 years? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what you're seeing come out, we got a full LP coming out early in spring in 23. You know, right around February uh, or March, we're going to drop the, the whole album, okay? Nice. And these are songs that we wrote over the last 40 years. So like Bob told you, man, they're just good songs with great melodies, with timeless messages. And no matter how old it is and how, how far back we wrote them, I think people are going to find them very, very fresh. 
You know, the lyrical contests are going to be with substance. They're going to have meaning. They're going to include love, relationships, ups, downs, all kinds of good stuff. The only thing you're not going to hear is you're not going to hear profanity. You're not gonna hear us. Right. You're not gonna hear us degrading women. You know, what I'm saying? you know, our, we're not gonna promote any violence, and our videos are not gonna have any girls twerking. Sorry for those of you that like twerking, but it's not gonna. Be twerking, man. You know, so you know, at the at the end of the day, it's all about positive music, man. That's really what we want to sort of reinject from our perspective back into the, the industry. Like you said, it's kind of lost that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it is sad, man. You know, like how RB has gone in different directions and stuff because have. I was saying to someone, I was like, have some artists back in the day sign to labels to now. They try to, you know, make them go in this type of route. They'd be like, wait a minute now, you know, like, what happened? And right. stuff. Like, I mean, you got this before money just to sell your soul or something. Well, well you <laughs> know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because, like I told you earlier, uh, the industry executives make all those decisions, right? You know, right. so, and it's all about the bag. You know, their, 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 their definition of bag, it's all about the money. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, everybody has always known that sex sells. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so since they know that, what they do is since they got the power and the control, it's easy for them to tell a young, up-and-coming, vulnerable who artist who wants, it who wants to be famous, you know, and wants to make it in the industry to say, hey, you want to make it? You want to really make it? Make your songs a little edgier. Sing more about sex. Take some clothes off. Show some skin. Do this, do that. And you got these young, impressionable kids that are like, okay, if that's what I got to do to make it, and there's nobody that's sort of guiding them to say, hey, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? You might be sacrificing your morals, you know what I'm saying, and your values. You might be going against what mama and papa taught you. And your grandparents. You know what I'm saying? Still yeah. You know, and so they go yeah. with the flow, and, and, and sure enough, some of them might make a whole lot of money, but in the interim, I think they're sacrificing something that's even greater, and that's your dignity and your respect and some other things that we're not going to get into the politics of that right now, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, like, when it comes to, like, as far as the contract you guys had, you know, was it a good contract or was it something like you guys later on felt like, man, damn, you know, like, we did all that for nothing. All we got nickels and dimes and pennies, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it wasn't that we didn't try to sign the right contract. We went and got an attorney. Unfortunately, the, inter the attorney wasn't an entertainment lawyer. Right. You know, he was a practitioner of law. He said the contracts were fine. It and looked he, good he to took, him. Yeah, we took his word for it. But okay. then, no, no, better. going back, we fell into the same we, we fell into the same pigeonhole that a lot of artists fell yeah. into, where they were only making pennies on the lot uh, on the dollar. Right. And. The, the record company was recouping everything, everything, every limo that we we stepped every into, we bought. every piece of clothing, wow. every hotel that we stayed every in, airfare. every every meal that we ate got recouped. So at the end of the day, you got four guys in the group trying to split. Let's say it's ten dollars before we get paid. Manager, the manager gets paid, the producers get paid. Yeah, my, right. You know. This one gets paid by the time we get back five cents. We had five cents to split four ways. Yeah. And, and, and we were like, that ain't going yeah. anywhere. And it, 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 it's, it's hard to slice a penny, yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. And then they decided to keep the penny, too. Right, right, right. We were like, oh, man. I mean, be... but, but we, we weren't, really, we weren't the worst story to, nah, to, to nah, happen. Nah. Because our success, even though we hit, the top 10 on the billboard charts, we didn't become the household name like the TLC. Right. Tony Braxton, you know, went through some, 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 some you know, trials, we, you know, everybody's heard stories right. of artists that were household names. TLC. That they they oh, thought that they yeah. were bringing in all this money, living up and come to find out all these years later, they were just as bad or if not worse off right? because they, they had all that fame right but they you know i've heard stories of, of some of the top artists man that were homeless oh, man. you yeah. know oh. at, at points and right. you know yeah. borrowing yeah. money from from oh, this man. one, that oh, one. and you're like wait a minute they had they had grammy selling you know right. grammy nominated songs and you yeah. know so so we weren't the worst yeah, yeah. The, the, the the industry did a lot of people wrong yeah, you know? yeah. most of yeah, yeah man it definitely did that. you know you know like during that time uh especially be you know be the young man did it kind of get to y'all mentally like dang man you know we was on tv we did this and that and it's like what the fuck you know 
or mm-hmm. did it came to you? I'd be like, you know what? We not gonna let that get to us mentally. Go crazy, start drinking and smoking and stuff. Like so, groups they they fall apart. Yeah, they think that like this this the end of the world. Like, how did you guys like held it together throughout the years mm-hmm. on the mental so part? No, you're 100 percent correct. At first, it was like, man, you know, it, the 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 person that really got affected was our families because our families all saw us on TV. They they hear about how many records we're selling and and how many times it's being played. So they're like, yeah, you know, they're telling us, hey, where's the money at? Where's the money at? And we're like, it's coming. It's they're telling and it's coming. It's coming. But it came, but it went. So right. we, you know, we all got discouraged. But at the same time, we told our families that you know. We can't let it get get us down. We just right. got to keep moving forward, and at, at some point, it's going to get better for us. And that's why right. we kept going. Yeah, and, and to piggyback off of what Larry said, you know, we I think we did a pretty a fairly good job of not letting those those situations get us down as as far as real life is concerned, right? So we all went and we got regular jobs, you know what I'm saying? And we started businesses, yeah. and we had families, we had marriages, we had children. And we continue to try to stay blessed and grateful through it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. You know, none of us got hooked on drugs. None of us got hooked on alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't get caught up in the in the in the in the system, as so to speak. And 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 we just lived regular lives like like most people. But we kept kept our heads up. We kept the love for music going. Okay, and like we told you, we will always come together. Yo, let's write a song. No, hey, let's do this. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? We would get invited periodically to do shows here and there. So our craft always stayed in the mix all these 30 years. It's just now that one of the the best, the most valuable commodity is time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Bob retired from his job. Well, what? what? J- July. July. End of July. Larry oh, just man. retired okay, from his job two days ago. You know, <laughs> I've, always had, places, I, I've always been self-employed, so I'm handing my businesses over to my kids, and now we all got our time back. And so it was the perfect time to say, you know what? Now that there's nothing on the calendar, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. We can focus <laughs> all of our time, our resources, and our energy into making the best music that we can make. And, and present it to the world in the best fashion that we can present it. And that's where we are, brother. Oh, man, you know, it, it, that's a blessing, man, because, you, you know, some people die strong about it like that and stuff. And it's good to support each other. Because some people, it's like they know when when your, when your closest friends and your brothers is going, you know, it's feeling down. Instead of them, they be like, hey, man, you know, like, we're not going to go out like that. They just, like, let a person go and dissolve into obscurity, man. Let me tell you, man, we love each other too much to let that happen, man. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, not that any of us really chose any of those particular roads, yeah. but the, the love that we have for one another, man, if any of us, well, he's my big brother, so he would have pulled my coattail anyway. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, but even Larry's been a brother to us for over 40 years, so if he saw me going the wrong way, he's going to pull my coattail. If I saw him going the wrong way, I'm like, you're broke. Come on, man. Yeah, don't we got that. you, man. You, yeah. you don't need that. You know what I'm saying? So that that love that we have for each other, I think, would have sustained us one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we've we've yeah. always been blessed to have family and community. Yeah. You know, like like you say, we were all at one point living in Hartford County, Maryland. Right. You know, our parents are still there. Right. You know, we've cre- we created uh, friendships and bonds with a lot of people in that community. And over the years, there's been a lot of people probably on, on, on the gram right now watching mm-hmm. that were always saying, you guys need to come out with another record. We need another one. Do something. We need and, another one. And I was the one that was always trying to push the fellas, yeah, yo, we right, need to get right. back into the studio. Let's right. do something. Yeah. Let's do something. Yeah. Every year, I was like, yeah. yo, let's do this. Let's do this. But the timing, just you know, right. wasn't right or the obligations, people still had to work, people still had to find bills. Or something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like Ray said, all of a sudden, once I once I retired from my job, that freed up my time. As soon as they did that, I, I actually had other plans. I was prepping my garage to be a studio slash shop and do, you know, my little work and crafting and all that stuff. And they said, no, nah, let's get into the lab, man. Let's work. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's, what we, that's what we made the lab. Let's do it. <laughs> so we started telling Larry, okay, we're going to get together this day. We got this right. rehearsal. We're going to record today. And he was like, I gotta work tonight. I'm like, what? I was tonight? working night shift. You know what I mean? I, it was killing me. Like, <laughs> we're like, we're like, work tonight. Come on, man. Don't even worry about that. And right. then the universe, yeah, the universe has actually been putting everything that we've wanted and have requested mm-hmm. as far as this project 
into place. Mm. You know, it hooked us up with the, the right uh, studio recording, the right oh. engineers, the right producers, you know. Yeah, the marketing team. Yeah, the, the marketing, marketing team. team. Every, every time we said, okay, we need to come up with X amount of dollars. And even though we were already tapped out, we're paying mortgages and car notes and this and that, all yeah. of a sudden, boom, oh, oh, oh here, okay, here's an, here's an extra little dibby that we can put put towards right. the studio time. Right. Everything just kind of fell, fell into place, place and fell into place. And to me, it was obvious. Yeah. It was inevitable. Yeah. Right. The universe is allowing for us to come back and do this. Yeah, the Lord right. wanted us you know to do I mean? this, man. He said, you guys got to keep doing this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, because, you know, and people, all, all these people fully understand it. it's like, you know, when God gives you this tool as far as saying it, it's like, why stop? You know, regardless of certain situations, they did continue on, but, you know, one monkey don't stop the show. Got to keep it going. It's kind of like getting a gift, right? And, and, and you and you look at it, it's all packaged up and you're looking at it, but you never open that gift up, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know? We we opened up our gift a long, long, long time ago, and we always had it in our hands. We never really stopped utilizing that gift. You know what I'm saying? It's just as far as the world is concerned, being able to share it with the world, we had some obstacles along the way. But we want everybody out there to know that those obstacles are not no longer in the way. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're bringing it, and we're going to continue to bring it. In fact, this first single comes out December 16th, but we're following up every two months. All right. I'm, I'm going to say give or take because it might be three months. It might be two months. Right. But every few months we're dropping a single for this whole year coming up in 23. And we're going to try to put a video to our every and, and with month. a video. OK. And that's and that's and that's what we, we're we going to put out there right now. <laughs> right. Man, looking forward to it, man. You know, I saw uh, the group I interviewed uh, last week. That was about a couple weeks ago, Special Generation. And I said, if we would have had social media back then, what would do for y'all careers, regardless of label dropping y'all? And they said, man, like we'd probably be billionaires right now. Now, just imagine if we had all this back then, and especially during the height of what y'all was doing, what do you think that probably would have done for you guys personally? Let me tell you, you talked a little about a bit about earlier about work ethic, I think. And, and I'm not taking away from none of the up and coming and the modern day artists, but there was a particular work yeah. ethic that yeah. us old schoolers oh. had to have simply because of the world that we were living in. Right. If you wanted to get something, you had to go out there and get it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, you couldn't click a button or, or, or flip a switch. You know what I'm saying? You had to go out there, get throw your clothes on and go out to the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And right. so, you know, if we would have had this internet with that same work ethic, I I, I agree with you, it's man. I think I think things would have been ridiculously crazy at that time, you know. <laughs> so, hey, you they, know? the 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 kids, the generation nowadays don't realize how blessed they are to have these devices in their in their back pockets. Because right. we had to go to the payphone. You know, I had to go. I had to go to the Seven Eleven. You know, I had to call radio. Yeah, orders in the in the yeah, lot of work, man. And then when technology finally came around, it was a two-way pager. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I, remember those, man. I used to hate those damn things, man. <laughs> yeah, if it was urgent, you put 911, yeah. 911, boom, oh, you send that oh, over. What's you know? going on? Yeah. yeah. And then you had to find the yeah. phone booth, drop that diamond, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so, I mean, you know, we're aging ourselves right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, what what this, and, and you mentioned the internet, what the internet has done for 4 p.m., and I want everybody to know this, is that as soon as we realize that that this platform, this this digital age was going to allow us to go to, to, to yeah. go independent okay then we yeah. took advantage of that we we started our own label we got we got our llc and we went ahead and 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 created our distribution deal you know so we we got our distribution leg in order we got our marketing you know we outsourced our marketing and our promotion but we contacted the companies that we felt were going to be the best ones to get us on radio and to get our stuff here here and here you understand what i'm saying but at the helm and at the top of the creative flow is the three guys you're looking at right here. We own all of this. You know what I'm saying? We own our masters on all our new material. We decide what, when, how, and what we want to release. We arrange to get three remixes done, not just one, but three. <clears throat> so on the 23rd of December, a week after the, sing the, the original drops, we're dropping three very different remixes of the same song. You and that's going to be out Everybody's everywhere. Love it. You know what I'm like, saying? Whoa, I like that version. Yeah. <laughs> Man, and, you know, I, you know that's crazy because, you know, all the artists today don't realize like you gotta wear media hats. You know, it's one thing, it's one thing like you think of like an artist, you write a song, you perform it, and this and that, you record it. 
But on the back end of it, you know, so you got where the bit is at, like the paperwork, you know, uh, every day the signature, make sure everything is good and stuff. I had to get on my cousin. I had to get on my cousin about that a couple months ago. He said, "All I want to do is take it like an artist." I said, "Bro, don't don't do it. Don't don't hurt yourself." Man. Don't you do know? it. Don't do it, man. You got it. Let me tell you. Thanks, sir. You we're blessed. We're, we're, wearing wearing our artist hats got us in a lot of in a lot of pinch back in the day. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were so focused on being the artists and being the entertainers that we we didn't have the mindset. You know, and we were younger. You know, a little bit more naive, but we didn't have the mindset of like. Yo, let's fine tooth comb that contract. Let's read it several times. Let's let's do this, that, and the other. We didn't have that mindset, you know what I'm saying? But over the years, every single one of us has been, you know, supervisors or owners or managers over businesses. That you know what I'm saying? Contracts, yeah. You know, we we we've managed employees and 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 all kinds of different contractors and all that. So you know, the the business knowledge that we've gained over the years is are coming into play with our music business now. You know what I'm saying? Right. So now right. we, now it's easy to say. Nah, let's not do that. Let's do this, or let's let's check this out, or let's let's try three different promotional companies, see which one works out the best. You know what I'm saying? Let's vet them closely, right? Check out check out the background, make sure they're gonna work. And so we're in a much much better position to, you know, take off the artist hat, which we have to do often, especially now. You know what I'm saying? And put on the CEO hat and say, okay, let's make sure that we're conducting our business in a, in a fashion that's gonna be beneficial to us. And then we could put the artist back hat, hat back on when it's time to get on that stage or rehearse or, or record. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, man. I want to say, man, uh, if you could give y'all old self like the 1995 4 p.m. advice, what would you give them? They, they would stand up right here. What, what type of advice y'all would give them? Don't you know, sign whatever. the contract. <laughs> 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 or do your homework. Get some books. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of literature out there that that can explain everything about music publishing, how to run a music, you know, yeah. business. All of that is out there. It's all available. It's just back then you had to go to the bookstore to go get it, you right. know, and then you had to put gas in your tank to get there. So there was a lot of there were a lot of obstacles back right, then. Right, right. Where now you can just go right on the internet and get all that information for free. So for any artists that are out there. Yeah. Do your homework first. Yeah, Learn everything you need to know about the music yeah. business before you get in started with this. Because yeah. you you have to be prepared. And, right. and there's going to be some some people out there who have the artistry, don't necessarily have the the business sense, like you're saying. So you're always going to need somebody to help you out with something, right? Yes. The, the teamwork does make the dream work, yes. right? However, okay, try to retain as much ownership, equity. You know what I'm saying? That you can in your career, man. If you could if you could be the guy making the decisions and be the one in charge of deciding what your vision is and how you want that to play out, you know, as far as what people see, try to be try to be that person. And then if you need somebody to help you get dressed and, and wear the right clothes, hire that, hire person, that person. You know, you let know. it be a work for hire situation. You know, if you need somebody to manage your funds and your finances, get an accountant. You Push know? your pride aside. If you need somebody to negotiate those sync licensing deals and those publishing deals, find a good lawyer and pay him to do that. You know, as opposed to saying, okay, record company, here's my artistry, here's my life, here's my name and likeness, here's everything that I've worked hard to learn how to do and I'm good at, and I'm going to put it in your hands and now you decide what you want me to do with that. Right. That's the best advice we can give. Right. Man, hey, looking forward to the new single and the video because I'm definitely gonna support it. And you know, I tell you, man, you know, it's crazy because a lot of groups go through this all the time. And just like this guy just said, you know, it's just like, oh, you guys will come back and stuff. And especially we hear like a marathon so much, like, man, if we don't do something now, <laughs> man, people look at us like, you know, we will always be in a mystery of what we once was. And, and the good thing about it too, because usually talk a lot of times when artists do come back, the songs may not may not live up to it. I ain't talking about hits, but far as like what you always represent and stuff. And when I heard on SoundCloud, I said, okay, you know, uh, these guys yeah. came back full swinging. Listen, we said, yeah, appreciate, appreciate that, you know, and I want you to know that what you heard on SoundCloud, and it's funny because we, we're all saying it right now. We're getting ready to drop the single, and it's not the best of the songs that we got the on the album. You know what I'm saying? We, got some we, 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 we felt that it was the best representation to, 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 to reintroduce ourselves to the industry. OK, but it's definitely not the best song, man. But every song does have that same quality of lyrical content, substance. You know what I'm saying? The melodies are right on point. The storytelling is going to be right on point. And, and, and we were fortunate. And, and big shout out to Hookmaster Jazz, yes. to, to, to Mr. Mig uh, out in Jersey, Red to, to uh, uh, R3 Recordings, 
Who else? Who am I missing? To Stereo Souls, to DJ Soulchild out in Switzerland. Switzerland okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 managed to to find the right cats to help us to get the production side because, like you said, we're 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 some OGs, all right, and we got right. good music, we got a good sound, but production wise, you got to fuse that with what's going on today a little bit, right. you know, to to kind of cater somewhat to the masses. We're not selling us ourselves out in terms of who we are and what our sound is, but right. we also wanted our music to sound very today. You, does right. that make sense? Right. Right. And we wanted it to be yeah, relevant. Really so we got a couple of cats a little younger than us to say, come on in and help us, you know, put these two, let's marry, marry these two styles together and let's see what we can do. And some of the time, you know, I think, I think we, we nailed it on that one. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely, man. And shout to DJ Soul you know, a real cool uh, 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 brother, you know, and, uh, you know, I tell you, man, you know, like they love RB heavy, those countries, man. I mean, wow. I swear, man, like when the internet first came in, I'm thinking like, I didn't think they was really big on it. I mean, they don't care if you've been gone forever, man. They would just play the hell out of your music, yeah. man. Yeah. Very <laughs> loving, man. They're very loving, man. Very they love. show much love. Yeah. People would be surprised when they, when they leave the U.S. and go to the other countries. Yeah. Like our first time we went to Japan, Ooh. it was like a culture shock. It was, it was like a trip back in a time capsule. Yeah. Cause we would, we would go to the streets, to the shopping districts and all the shops are playing music. And what are they playing? They playing hip hop, hip -hop R and B. The kids in Japan, and I'm talking about Japanese kids, you know, yeah. slanted eyes, good hair. They got on Kangos. Adidas sweatsuits, wow. Kazals, Pumas, Kazals. Yeah, that's true. They, they that's were, true. and, and this love. was, this was 95, this was 95, 96. Between 95 97. and 97. Yeah. And they, they brought the 80s back. They yeah. looked like they were getting ready to put out the linoleum carpet and break dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? We would go yeah. to, we would go to different restaurants and, and, and see live performances. The bands in the, in the restaurants, oh. all Japanese Asian cats playing soulful. They playing the OJs. They playing, right. you know, oh, the Vandros. They, right. I mean, they love American R&B &B &B. soul. They they just love our black culture. I yeah, mean, yeah they do. They, they had afros. They had cornrows. Yeah, they, they spray painted themselves. Dark. You know, it was the craziest thing. Yeah, yeah. I, man, I, I they they, they took it to a whole different level, man. Yeah. <laughs> I went over there, I was like, man, I'm a light skinned brother. You you talking to me? <laughs> now, now the, fortunate thing, the fortunate thing about that as well was that we were fortunate to do the, the song Sukiyaki. That introduction to that Asian market, it ended up taking us back to Japan 32 times something like in that. a 10 year span. Yeah. We, not, and not only Japan, we did Malaysia, Singapore, the Indonesia. Philippines. Indonesia, uh, Hong Kong, yeah, yeah. Man. it was crazy, yeah. Yeah. man. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing too. People don't realize, man. I mean, Asian people, man, when they love army music, when they love the black and black culture, man, they will go all out, man. I yeah. mean, yeah. I had never seen that like it, man. I remember, yeah. I, was, I remember one time when I was, I was doing posters for this one record company, and uh, I see the uh, a Chinese dude, but he had like a gold grill and. And, you know, he was all about Wu-Tang. I was like, what is yeah, the hell yeah. going on, man? With dancers, they, they love my style, man. Yeah, man. They love no the doubt. flavor, man. They no love doubt. the flavor. And, no they, and it's, they real with it. I mean, they really love that. It's, right. not, it's not fake. Like, you know, some people might come yeah. the outside and yeah. look in and go, I don't know, man. That's not real. No, that is real. They live in that over there. Yeah. 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 They are, man. And they let you know. They will embrace it. They don't, they don't care, man. You know, somebody, you know, came and went. You know, they yeah. will pay money to see you again, to perform. Absolutely. To Absolutely. Your songs, man. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, man, but thank you, man, for reaching out to me, man. I appreciate it. You guys have come back and yeah. talk about the music video and, yeah, you know, talk about this single again, man. I tell you, man, you know, one thing I always tell people, man, you know, you guys made your mark on this, in, in, in the music business, man. Nobody can't take away what you guys brought in to the game, brought into the culture you, and stuff. You know, you. music videos, sold out shows, you know, touring, um, you know, going different places that nobody think, you know, see y'all been at, man. And, yeah. you know, 4 p.m., man, definitely got a legacy of its own. You know, like, what does the name mean to you guys? The the, the name 4 p.m.? Yeah. What's it mean? Oh, man, you know, uh, you know as, as Bob mentioned earlier, the acronym stands for For Positive Music, man. And, and, and that's really just... Just that word positive, man. In the world that we live in today, if, if, if anybody that's really paying attention, man, 
you know, it's sad to even say it, man, but there's been a sort of a spiraling down of, of, of morals and values. You know, the kind of stuff that we see kids doing openly, little young kids doing openly on the Internet. Man, I would have caught such a butt whipping from my mom back in the oh, day doing some of that stuff, man. You know, yeah, you everybody, everybody would have had me. Like, what are you doing, kid? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, like we, we didn't even think of that kind of stuff when we were coming up. I tried to tell my kids that they're like, really? I said, nah, man, we there, there was a there was a mutual respect for morals and values. Everybody knew, yo, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do that. I'm not saying we had a perfect environment, but you didn't step I mean, out the house, like you know, and, 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 and with the sad, the sad thing about that is that I think a lot of it is is with the, the, the mass media. Right. You know, I'm, I'm talking media. about TV, movies and the music industry is sort of force feeding you know, our, our kids, you know what I mean? You know, like you said earlier, man, it's almost like they're saying, hey, you know, this is what you got to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they're creating the, the the narrative of what they feel our young society should be doing, and it's not very positive. So 4 p.m., that's what that stands for. It's positive music, man. Listen, you can sing a song without the seven deadly words, man. You don't have to have the B word and the F word in there. You don't have to have it in there, man. You know, you 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 can you can listen. You can sing a song that talks about love. We all know what goes on in the bedroom, and I don't need to know what's going on in yours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little things like that that I think people kind of you know they they lost sight of that somewhere along the line, and 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 I think they feel that it's necessary to do that. And I'm not gonna I'm not knocking anybody that wants to present their craft in the style and fashion that they want to. Okay, but I'm trying to explain to you that with the three of us right here, that's what we stand for. Yeah, that's what yeah. we stand. We're trying to keep it right here, man, positive all the way through. I, I yeah, think it, I think it's really obvious, especially in the recent years, you know, um, how so many young artists are out there trying to present their craft, trying to make a living, but based on the style that they chose, the lyrical content that they chose they've made it a violent thing. I mean, yeah. every other month, mm. there's this rapper got killed and that yeah. rapper got shot. And, you know, that's yeah. that's, the, that's right really tomorrow. heartbreaking. You yeah. know what I mean? It's sad. Yeah, it's yeah. man, not even you know, 40, man. Matter. They're getting killed by, like, 12, 13 years old, man. Yeah, they, they're, not, they're not making it to 25 years old. And you know there's no reason for that. Reason and it's that. like, well, life is what, is, what is that about? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's, it's just crazy. Exactly. I couldn't see myself doing that, man. My mom would have killed me, man. Oh, <laughs> It'd be the yeah. first and last time. <laughs> I couldn't even pull that off, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Man, but yeah. thank you guys, man, for coming on here, man. Really appreciate that, man. Definitely got to do this again, man. And I tell you, oh, yeah. man, you know, I, 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 I want everybody, yeah, I want everybody on my end, man, to follow, you know what I'm saying, 4 p.m., I don't appear in the comment. You know what I'm saying? That single's coming, man. You guys, man, I tell you, man, uh, Vocally, but you guys killed it. Thank yeah, you, Mr. Thank you, man. Hey, hey, thanks for having us, man. We appreciate yeah. and we, thank we you appreciate what, what you, you yeah, what you're doing, man. Because man, let me tell you, man, I went through your page, man. The yeah. way that you're highlighting the legends, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Much love to you for that. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. And uh, you know, I always try to highlight everybody, man, that people forgot about yeah. and and try yeah, to you know, uh, do their careers and stuff. Everything that people see on there, you know, it's all legit. And you ain't gonna worry about yeah. no damn reality guys up and all those other platforms talking about uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. good work, man. Good work for real, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, appreciate it, man. But uh, man, with that being said, man, let's do it again, man. Yeah, man. Let's do it again. Let us know, man. We we here, bro. We'll, and, to we'll, every, and to everybody that's out there watching, man, thank you for joining in. And thank you for supporting him too. Yeah. Thank you. And for supporting us as well. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, man. So you guys have a blessed night, man. Good night. All right. All right. Be Stay good. positive. Peace.